Uh, I hate to admit it, but I have once again decided to start playing a gacha game. I thought it was cured, but uh, in the background you can see me trying to get the newest 3 star in the recently launched game Girls Frontline Project Neural Cloud. The character I want of course is the one that you can see on the banner there, Kuro, the 3 star, and uh, this was how my rolls went. And just like that you can actually see the very first 10 roll that I did. I got a 3 star. Now you might think, oh wow, that's crazy. What are, the, what are the odds that this is actually the character I want? But of course, as is gacha luck, as always, uh, what is it? The rate up is a lie, right? And uh, of course, despite the odds, we instead get Florence, which is a new character at least that I have. And you might think, oh well, at hey, at least you have a new character. Yeah, well, remember that face. That's not going to be the last we see of her. It was at this point that I was sorely reminded why I stopped playing gacha games. But maybe this is just because it's a new game and so it's still fresh and stuff like that. Maybe that's the reason why I'm saying this, but I do think that I quite enjoyed the first week or two of me playing Project Neural Cloud. Mainly because of the gameplay, which I'll get into later on when show some footage of that. But especially I think because of how in the early stages you're very weak and so you actually have to... You can't just steamroll everything with high stats and strong units, so you do actually have to put some thought behind how you play the game. Eventually, I do get another three star and you might think, oh, maybe surely this is the one. This is the one, right? But no, it is yet another dupe. Is, uh, you hate to see it, but I'd rather prefer something new, but we take it. Like, I think anybody that has played a gacha game would have this similar feeling of not even just not getting the character that you want, but just not even getting a new character, because at least that's a consolation prize. It's just getting what is quite literally not really useless because maybe you get materials to do other stuff, but something that is not new. You, you were so close to greatness, but you just threw it away. And I mean, to be fair, at least I'm free to play. So this doesn't really cost me anything other than just time and effort. But there are people that would obviously spend money and try and, you know, get a new character. So for them, it is way, way more worse. Eventually, though, I get another 10 roll with two three stars. Surely, surely one of them has to be Kuro, right? Surely. And uh, luckily enough, yes, we do indeed get Kuro on our 70th, or 70th roll. And the, of course, as luck would have it, the other one was Florence, the same one we got in the first attempt. But I mean, to be fair though, I can't really complain, right? Four three stars in 70 rolls, that's a, that's a pretty good odds. And technically speaking, two of them are new, with one of them being the one that I wanted. I can't really complain. But yeah, I stopped playing gacha games about a couple of years ago, but one of the ones I used to play was Girls Frontline. And it just so happens that this new game here, Project Neural Cloud, is kind of related to it. And so I thought I'd give it a try, and so far, I'm really enjoying it. It's one of the few gacha games where I actually find myself enjoying the gameplay, and uh, not just the, the cute anime girls. Admittedly, you do eventually get to a point, like in most games, where you can just turn your brain off and the game just plays itself. All you do is stare at the cute girls and uh, feel good about bigger numbers. But while I was going through the story in the early stages of the game, I actually struggled, since my teams were considerably underleveled, and I had to actually use my brain. The game works like a roguelike auto chase battler, where you progress through different rooms, collecting power-ups along the way, and getting certain power-ups in a set to unlock even stronger benefits. Random events can influence the run, and placement of your units can affect the outcome of the battle. Now, if you're underleveled like I was at times during the story, things can get kind of dicey. Even with all the power-ups, you might still struggle against certain enemies, or some of the gimmicks in the map might be causing you grief. That's where the big brain plays come in. By strategically positioning your units, you can make use of the map layout better, or you can use your skills to either focus on a target, or reposition somebody, or even stun a threat. You can have a fight play out entirely differently depending on what you do. And let me tell you, I felt like an absolute genius when I found a way to beat a stage after pummeling my face against a wall multiple times. In fact, the game even encourages it. You're allowed 10 retries in a battle, and this is 10 retries for every single room that you enter. But of course, now that I have actually had a chance to level up my characters, I'm relatively strong, even though I'm free to play. The current gameplay loop for me now is just to log in about two or three times a day, spend my stamina, and then wait for it to regenerate and do the same thing. I do hope that in the future though, some more challenging things show up. I don't typically like to make comparisons, but I do think that many people would compare this game to Arknights in the strategically place your units type of thing. And yes, I myself tried out Arknights myself, and I did enjoy that strategic aspect of it too. But the issue for me personally was that because I didn't spend any money on the game, I didn't have the strongest options available. And I know people would say, oh, but you can clear all the stuff in Arknights with the, the weaker options. And yes, it is doable, but more often than not, that would require you to follow a guide to know exactly how to use those weaker units to their fullest potential. And at some point I realized I wasn't even playing the game, I was just simply following the guides of other people and having them play the game for me, just doing their inputs. Now, of course, you could just say, well, just don't follow the guides. And yes, that is an option as well, but, but unfortunately, I did not have the time nor the brains to do that 
while still being able to earn all of the different currencies and stuff like that available in the time given. But I feel like the gameplay in this game, Project Neural Cloud, the randomness is just enough that it alleviates any of that heavy thinking necessary. It can still require some thinking depending on how difficult things get, but it's not like that difficult where you have to plan out an entire 30 minute run of where do I place my unit? When do I place my unit? How do I place my unit? When do I use a skill? It's more, it's much more simpler in terms of the decisions that you have to make. But the decisions are better than just rock, paper, scissors of do I press the red card or the blue card or the green card? Yes, you know what I'm talking about. The randomness in the game kind of promotes the thought of if you don't succeed at first, just try and try again. Because literally, maybe you might get better RNG on the next run and you might have the stronger cards that work better for your unit. Or maybe if you place a unit just one spot to the left, that can make an entirely different outcome and uh, things like that. But yeah, for now, in the foreseeable future, this is going to be my new guilty pleasure gacha game. This is probably going to be the only video I make about a gacha game like this, because again, it's a guilty pleasure of mine, like I said. But uh, maybe, I don't know, maybe I'm posting this video to show off the fact that I got four three stars and 70 rolls, I guess, I don't know. Maybe that's going to come back to bite me in the ass later on. But I do genuinely quite like this game. From the gameplay to even this simple little story, the story isn't as uh, in-depth as what Girls Frontline is, but Girls Frontline's story is a whole nother can of worms. But yeah, I guess that is the end of this, I guess, subtle little flex on uh, my gacha luck. Till the next one, bye-bye.